Hello and welcome to this talk. My name is Sarah Konradi and today I want to introduce you to the user level documentation of Nest. I will speak a bit about its philosophy, the latest updates and what's next. To give you some context before I start, since July 2017 there's a small team at Nest which focuses on the documentation. That's Dennis Terhorst, Steffen Graber, and myself. And together we are continuing the work of Jessica Mitchell, who is not here with us right now. So the motivation behind the documentation is to help researchers in neuroscience and other fields who are interested in simulation technologies in their use of NEST. This also enables us to build a sustainable infrastructure for writing, extracting, and rendering documentation, as well as supporting the community's needs with regard to documentation. And in order to achieve that, the documentation should work for those who use NEST, as well as those contributing to NEST. For users, the documentation should be easy to find, use, and understand, meaning that one could locate relevant information quickly, navigate through different examples, and that the explanations are on the right level for the reader. So special care has to be taken for the usage of technical and neuroscientific terms and the required background knowledge. Now for those contributing to NEST, the documentation should be easy to write and easy to maintain, meaning that developers can effortlessly add documentation when working on a new feature, and that documentation is structured in a way to minimize the effort needed to keeping it up to date. Here you can see our user-level documentation workflow. As you can see, the Nest Simulator documentation lives alongside the source code on GitHub. We use Sphinx for generating documentation and read the docs to publish it. The source files are in restructured text and the output in HTML. In case you're wondering about the offline and online areas, what happens offline is the same as what happens online, only the behavior is different. Offline, you have the raw HTML files, whereas online, these are presented on the web server. Users can test any changes locally offline, whereas Read the Docs shows only merged pull requests. And this workflow aims for the concept of user correctable documentation because for a community code, the documentation also needs to be a community effort. This way we can ensure scalability as well as sustainability. You can find the detailed instructions on Read the Docs and these will show you step-by-step step how you can change the documentation by setting up your environment and generating documentation locally with Sphinx. This brings us back to the idea of documentation that is easy to write and easy to maintain. With this, I would like to add that it's important for our community to check the typeset documentation before submitting a pull request. Why is that? Well, because small typos become immediately noticeable. Here we see how a typo in the source file's math directive is immediately visible in the render documentation where the equation is missing. We can make an analogy with C++ code here, where you would also first check that the code compiles on your system and that the result is correct, and only then you would proceed with a pull request. Speaking of community, I would like to highlight that the documentation is the product of the whole community. Every issue and question that we receive from you helps us improve the documentation. Apart from the mailing list, the documentation is also addressed at open developer video conferences, which you may be familiar with, the Nest conference, hackathons, and tutorials. This way we can continuously improve by every feedback that we get. Now let's see what's new. Here you see our new model directory on Read the Docs. It's very similar to the old model directory, except that it's automatically created by sorting models by keywords. There are two aspects to this that I would like to show you. First of all, if you click on a given model, you get the model description. This is exactly the documentation that's in the source file. It's automatically extracted, meaning that no error-prone manual steps are involved. If you click on the title, 
the models are sorted by keyword, and you get a sub-index for all models with this particular keyword. This makes it easy to browse through models with specific characteristics, and it gives an overview of the available models. These keywords are not exclusive, meaning that models can be tagged with multiple keywords and appear in multiple indices. I will show you a source file in a second so that you get a better idea of the types of documentation we have and where this all originates. So this is an example of a source file. As you can see, all documentation is found in the same file as the source code. It's easy to keep in sync with the code and we can always document the right version of the code. So a developer can read the documentation and code at the same time in the same editor. If the code changes, the developer would immediately see how the documentation needs to be corrected. There are three types of comments, each with particular functions. We have the C++ comments, the user documentation, and the developer documentation. The C++ comments don't appear in the online documentation and cover implementation details and other aspects like the copyright notice. The user documentation is a comment block with begin user doc and end user doc markers. It uses restructured text syntax so equations are rendered nicely on read the docs. And it also defines the keywords, which you might remember from my previous slide. So really, this block focuses on the scientific background and information important to the model's user. The developer documentation, on the other hand, uses classic Doxygen comments. It shows up in the API documentation and contains the details that developers need in order to work with the code. So really, this block draws on the technical background. That being said, we still have lots of improvements to make for the documentation. You just saw the model directory, which we are working on. Apart from that, we are also improving the network model examples. So far, the examples have concentrated on minimal networks explaining fundamental operations, but now we should advance to less trivial and more neuroscientifically interesting examples. Additionally, we are in dialogue with our graphic designers to enhance the illustrations, welcome page, and CSS style sheet. This will help us guide the readers and provide a more intuitive experience. And besides improving the documentation of Nest itself, we are also working on embedding the documentation within the broader context, especially eBrains and in relation to other tools. A further goal is to integrate the documentation with abstract languages like Pine and NestML, visualization tools such as Nest Desktop, and analysis and validation tools like Elephant. We are actually pleased to be in contact with many of the main developers of these tools. And with that, I'd like to end by saying please continue contributing to the documentation if you find any issues, please submit them on GitHub using the documentation issue template, or you can also discuss them on the mailing list or directly get in touch with me. We really want to hear from you. Thank you for listening.